Hello and welcome back to CEO.ca's Inside the Boardroom. My name is James Patton and today I'm joined by Dustin Perry, CEO, founder and director of Kingfisher Metals. Dustin, it's great to see you today. Hi, James. Uh, nice to be on here. So let's kick things off with a quick elevator pitch. Can you tell us a bit more about Kingfisher? Yeah, so, so Kingfisher is a company I founded back in 2019 uh, alongside our vice president of exploration, Gail Febo. So we had worked together uh, mostly or actually exclusively in BC, but predominantly in the Golden Triangle. <clears throat> um, and we decided we wanted to build our own company uh, and target large discoveries. So what we've done with this company is build an incredibly strong technical team, experts in the Golden Triangle. Uh, we've got uh, very strong institutional funding. So between ultra high net worth and institutions, we're probably over 50%, which is quite unusual for a $10 million company. Uh, and then we've got a very large land position in the in the province of British Columbia. Uh, combined, uh, we are over, I believe, 1,250 square kilometers in the Golden Triangle alone. We've got a 630 square kilometer contiguous land position uh, adjacent to the highway, uh, the Sturcaster Highway, Highway 37. So um, a little bit to touch on the team a little bit more, though. Uh, Gail, our, our vice president of exploration, did her master's degree at the KSM project for Seabridge Gold, worked on the Bruce Jack discovery, has worked for Tech and Newmont at Galore Creek, and our lead technical advisor, Charlie Gregg, won the Prospect of the Year Award in the Golden Triangle for GT Gold, and he's also involved with other exciting porphyry companies, American Eagle and Hercules. So we really do have a strong technical team focused on the Golden Triangle, uh, we've got a number of existing deposits on the project, uh, and it is what I believe to be the most exciting porphyry story in the Golden Triangle right now for a junior. Okay, fantastic. Lots to unpack there. Uh, I mean, maybe let's start with the Golden Triangle. You know, you uh, recently uh, closed an acquisition for the LGM project, uh, so increasing the, the land package in the Golden Triangle. Uh, what attracted you to that particular project? Um, you know, can you walk us through the kind of backstory for the deal and maybe paint a picture of what it's like to be operating in the Golden Triangle uh, right now in, in 2024? Yeah, well, it's great to be operating in the Golden Triangle. Uh, you know, Newmont, <clears throat> Newmont surrounds us, it, it borders us to the north of our Highway 37 project and LGM, which we acquired, uh, is contiguous to the south of, of Highway 37 and uh, Tech and Newmont with their Galore Creek access road borders us to the south. So we've got great neighbors. Uh, we're also next to the highway and the power line. And, and what we've seen is a, a big push for major interest in the Golden Triangle with, with Newmont's acquisition of Newcrest. But previous to that, you know, they, they picked up GT Gold and had invested in that, in that company prior to the acquisition. So majors like this area, Tom Palmer in a recent interview at, at the BMO conference earlier in the year, uh, noted that they'll be mining in the Golden Triangle for the next 100 years. And, and I'm not sure if they have enough uh, feed from the current mines to do that. So there is going to need to be more discoveries. And uh, we're in a great spot to make more discoveries. So we picked up LGM because it was next door. It had similar geology. Uh, we've got Texas Creek intrusives. Uh, to simplify that, these are the same intrusions that created the Bruce Jack, the, the Tree Creek, and the KSM projects. Um, and then we've also got the same geology as Galore Creek, which Tech and Newman are focused on. So, uh, you know, a lot of opportunity for discoveries. All the clues are there already, um, and we've got the right team uh, to explore this type of project. So we were able to do that for a relatively low cost, 3 million shares, 75,000 cash, uh, and it's ours. So uh, that's why we picked it up. Uh, in terms of exploring the Golden Triangle, it's relatively straightforward. Uh, we've got one uh, indigenous group in the area, the Teltan, that are incredibly pro mining, um, and then we've you know we've got all these other companies operating there. So it's a pretty clear indication that it's a good place to be. Yeah, suddenly a uh, a busy neighborhood when it comes to mining, and and I guess great to hear that there are uh, you know pro mining uh, local support. Uh, you know, do you have any uh, active exploration work planned for this year? Uh, will you be doing any? Uh, yeah, any further kind of exploration or, or drilling this year, or uh, you know, what's what's the plan for the rest of 2024? Yeah, so I, I would imagine uh, around the time this video gets aired, <laughs> give or take a few days, we'll be we'll be putting out a news release. Just been working on writing it now uh, for what we're going to do this summer. Uh, we don't know the entirety of what we're going to do. We can tell uh, we can we'll be able to say what we're going to start with, um, and I would just say stay tuned for that information. 
Uh, but the key will be to drum up some new targets and really refine the existing targets on the project. So there are deposits on our Highway 37 project already that have excellent grade. Uh, you know, Williams was a recent porphyry discovery, 2018, where they drilled 0.33 copper and 0.39 gold over uh, 350 meters. So there's already good results. Uh, the Hank, the epithermal system, they drilled 20 meters of 12 grams or 9 meters of, of 16 grams gold equivalent. So we've got a lot of meat on the bone already, but we're going to look at how we can find where previous operators missed on these, but also what might be driving these with large porphyries underneath. Um, so that's, you know, the work we're going to do is going to lead towards drilling those. Um, and uh, and I, I hope we can come up with some excellent targets here. Yeah, well, looking uh, looking forward to those updates. Uh, I guess, you know, it's been a strong year for commodities so far. You're both copper and gold, uh, you know, testing all-time highs. Uh, you know, what's the environment like for juniors at the moment? Obviously, uh, you're a bit of a lag often between commodities and the underlying equities, but feels like we're starting to, uh, you know, maybe turn a corner from, you know, a couple of years of, of tough markets. What's your outlook for the junior sector at the moment? I think, uh, you know, I agree. There's definitely a lag. <laughs> the outlook is very promising over the next few years for quite a long time. Uh, when it turns and, you know, we see a premium coming back to these juniors, I don't know. Luckily, we've got very supportive shareholders and we've been able to raise very good money in really good institutional hands. So we have been able to survive. We did complete a rollback of share consolidation earlier in the year. Um it's kind of a reboot of the company um, and really focus on the golden triangle now. So I would say for us, uh, we're taking things, we're not going to go totally dilute the company right away. Uh, for other companies, some are struggling though for cash, uh, which is why we were able to do deals like this uh, recently for a low cost. Uh, some companies uh, don't have the same support of shareholders. Maybe they're more retail based and retail hasn't really come back into the, to the foray yet. So, uh, I would say it's challenging, but it looks very optimistic going forward with the you know bullish outlook for copper and gold. Uh, and what better place to be in the Golden Triangle where you've got you know a safe jurisdiction, supportive indigenous groups, major miners playing around, and then the two analogs we have on our project would be Galore Creek and KSM. And KSM is the largest undeveloped gold deposit in the world, third largest undeveloped copper deposit. I think Galore Creek would just be off the top 10 on, on largest undeveloped copper deposits. So these are huge systems and we've got the right geology and team experience in them um, and a very low valuation. So I would say it's, there's still compelling stories right now, <laughs> despite how beaten up everything is. Yeah, lots of, uh, lots of uh, I guess, valuable kind of components there in the company. You know, green flags for retail investors to look out for. Uh, I guess just to wrap up, you know, is there anything that you know, we haven't touched on uh, anything that retail investors or, or investors more generally should be keeping in mind uh, when they're looking at Kingfisher Metals uh, and you know, maybe what, what sets you apart from some of your competitors, both from the project stage and maybe other competitors in the Golden Triangle? So I would say project stage, uh, what sets us apart is just the evidence already, having three deposits on our project with grades over 200 meters gram equivalent, a uh, gold 200 grand meters gold equivalent. You know, that's pretty unusual for a single project. We just added another interesting target with Grizzly where they uh, took a trench sample of 38 meters of 0.74 copper and 1.1 grams gold. So excellent targets, but the key is we've got the right team in place. You know, Charlie Gregg won Prospector of the Year Award. Gail Febo, excellent uh, BC geologist. Uh, and then other young people in the who are big shareholders and also advisors, such as Zach Flood, who is the CEO and founder of Kennerland, and, and Francis McDonald, who's the also founder of uh, Kennerland and uh, CEO at Lyft. So, you know, a lot of young people are backing this, and, and then the institutional investors, like, they do their due diligence. So we've been vetted by a large group of people, and uh, we're doing things methodically, and, uh, you know, we're not going to race to waste money. We're going to try to make a discovery as quickly as possible, though. Great. Well, Dustin, great to hear about Kingfisher. I'm looking forward to uh, those pending updates, as you mentioned. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, James.